Hi, I'm Fosso Neredo. I currently work at Google, but I present, I'm going to present two things I've been doing outside before and after Google. Um, today's talk is about low Googleness and anthropogenesis, from creationism to evolutionism. What, 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 what does that mean? Um, it's a, it's a talk about story. I want to present you another talk before about another simpler kind of story. So let's start with a, a, a talk about story. Because stories are very important. Good stories are to die for, to kill for. Like, uh, can you imagine the stories that people kill each other with? Um, here's a, a, a talk about better stories and better languages. So what do I mean by better stories? Uh, okay, so my my, uh, my thesis is that uh, every behind every tool there is a story, and behind every story there is tool that corresponds to the story. And that uh, thinking about story is itself a great meta tool, and I'm going to tell you this meta story. So in this talk, in this uh, first uh, short talk, I will take a sad song and make it better. <laughs> That song will be uh, in uh, in red, and the better song in blue. And let's start with the song you know. Uh, if you ask the question, how how will we fund software? And there should be a software that we need to produce. And the story might be that the software is, will be owned and sold, and you will have better customers. And the solution is to have proprietary software for close binaries. If instead you ask the question, how to fund programming? And it should be in that start from a random code, then the story is that uh, the programming labor is owned and sold, and then you have contributors and users, and the solution is to have free software and open source. And I argue that it's a better story. Uh, if I ask a question, how do I decompose program? And the issue being that the program don't fit in your brain, uh, the story will be that, oh well, I have to decompose the program into a hierarchy of components, and uh, a fully formed designer will. Uh, that diagram and the solution is top time management and global diagrams. And if I ask you what you compose programming, then uh, many programmers will cooperate and uh, can have personal inform programmers who don't have to know everything uh, and they will uh, propagate the information to each other as they uh, need to. And the solution to have this <coughs> software and uh, to have maybe even this version control. If I ask the question, how do I achieve great software? So they should be that software is hard to design. Uh, the story will be that I need to disseminate uh, expert information and I will just restrict uh, each component to the, be written by the best uh, expert. And the solution is that we'll have standards and we'll, we'll segregate our components by expertise. Uh, every expert will have the right thing. And if I should say the question, who do I foster, foster better programming? Then the issue will, will be being that want to do our best and compete with others. Uh, the story is that instead you make uh, experiments and you'll uh, this way have experience and uh, you'll uh, improve uh, how people program and if you cultivate a good incentive, they will do the right thing. And so the solution is to have an abundant market of talent for you to select and uh, to have communities for people to learn. If I ask the question, what would you the feature in the programming language? And the problem being, uh, how am I going to make all the features of the machine available to, to the programmers? Then the solution is to look, here's the list of features the machine has, and I will like, have an instruction or a routine for each of these features, and I will, um, I will any choice topic of a programming language I will do. Instead, I ask the question, how do I express programming ideas? The issue being that, uh, I want to convey the meanings of the humans, the machine, and other humans. And the story being that programming languages are for humans. The solution will be to to make your to design a programming language to match the way people think. And you want to have simpler programming language, not not a pile of hundreds of features like PL1, but a, a nice uh, tight uh, programming language scheme. If I ask a question, how do I handle repetitive programs? Programs repeat each other. Right? They're like patterns of programs. So I call that a design pattern. I make a, a nice book called Design Patterns. And uh, I explain how it is that programmers do this great work of programming. They repeat about always the same thing that's what programmers do. And if you say, as a question, how do I remove programming drudge? Uh, the 
story being that the programmer is an abstract thinker, the language is a platform, and the solution will be meta programs but you don't theorize what people do. They do things, you make them not do things anymore. You write a meta program, and you make your programming language extensible. And if you say, uh, you accept that, and you say, oh, then how do I make my programming language extensible? Uh, then you will want to add hooks to make your, to extend your syntax, and you'll have side effect into the one syntax. And uh, you'll have macros and dynamic quick tables like in common list. If instead you ask the question, how do I explore the useful syntaxes? Then uh, you will have scope syntax specification, and you have things like racket and uh, ometa and ways to lexically uh, extend or lexically narrow the scope or the, uh, the syntax of your program. Uh, the syntax in scope. If I say, oh, that users are completely different from programmers, and the story being that yes, I differ, so you will have to turn down the UI for users for stupid and have uh, uh, all the power for actual developers, <coughs> maybe in a virtual machine. And the solution is that we will have completely unrelated uh, user interface and programming language. And we'll segregate this is for the people who know, uh, for the privileged, and this is for the idiots, you know, the users. Uh, if I say that using is programming, after all, when I use a machine, I'm telling the computer to do something that's programming. When I program the machine, I'm taking in front of the computer that's using the machine. So there is an essential um, uh, identity between the two. Uh, and then you see that every computer interaction is programming, and there's a continuum of processes. There's no complete idiots like a rock and, uh, and the geniuses. No, it's a, a continuum. I can be good at something and bad at other things. And, uh, I'm just grouping one category, the, the literacy and the ideas, you know. So you want to have an integrated third interactive interface, and you want to have maybe language developer and dialect that you can uh, talk to the machine at the level that you know, and not uh, being either on or off. If I say, oh, a programming language, programmer is totally different from a programming uh, language implementer. Programmers are just the users of the programming language. And the programming implementer is not the real, you know, the, well, then uh, they should, yes, but writing a compiler is right, it's hard. So, specialists will write the compilers, and mere programmers will just choose uh, the language that they are given. And then you have a closed implementation for it programming language. If it's try to say uh, programming is implementing a language, I mean, if you understand that choosing is programming, then uh, when you use a program, you are, uh, when you write a program, you're using the meta language. When I uh, but when I am the program, people who use the program, they, they, they use the programming language that I implemented as a programmer. As a programmer, you, you create a programming language that will be the one used by the user. So there's an essential identity between programming and implementing a programming language. And then you see that uh, uh, we understand that every language is actually a domain specific language for whatever the user wants to do, and that's how you design your system in, in terms of, uh, in this context, I have this kind of uh, language, which the language is like this in this context. I have first class implementation, local implementation. Uh, if I ask a question, well, the, okay, but then maybe the, so again, who define the programming language is a higher level of people who just implement the programming language, you know, because like, uh, mix them, and yes, designing the language is also hard. Um, then you have, once again, specialists who do the defining of the programming language and uh, mere programming language implementers who will implement them. And uh, so you have a standard for language and uh, the problem is that you will have a decade old design of the standard and actually uh, no one actually, actually has uh, good, no one knows how to, to design a programming language, that doesn't work. If you think that you, you realize that defining the language is implementing it, I mean, uh, if your language is uh, well defined enough to Run something is essentially implemented, and if it's implemented, whenever you learn something, you actually define the, the language. There's an identity between this uh, native mutable semantics and an implementation. Uh, when you realize that, what you want is just to have more declarative way of specifying your, your, your language. And uh, maybe you want indeed to, uh, to make your implementation strategy like not orthogonal to the way. Uh, things are defined so that you can define the semantics and be able to define the optimization or not. But uh, what you will want is a, a framework for people to be able to, uh, to define, uh, define languages better. 
well, if you really believe uh, Alan Pascal that the state uh, uh, doesn't, uh, shouldn't exist at all, then you should not have labels in the program, you should just combinators. You should just like to SK1, SKI, you know, or SK, or uh, single bit combinator, because that's all you need, you don't need a label. A label is meta-level state. A label says, oh, right now, uh, uh, this identifier is bound to this thing. So even Haskell believes in state just at the meta level. Well, uh, and state is modularity. State means that if I don't have to pass it around all the time, it means that uh, I can do something and other people don't have to worry about it. So the real question is how do I wrap and unwrap uh, something to make the state apparent or not apparent? So I, I want my mutable versus immutable views on my code. And I want uh, just to be able to automatic differentiation and integration of programs, I want to be able to say, hey, this is a data type, please give me the, the, der the derivative data type and send only the changes over the network. Or I want to say, hey, this is a derivative of the type, please reconstitute the, the sum of changes into uh, an object. And this, should be this is totally automatic. Oh. Uh, okay, so, uh, so some of the stories are well known and uh, already implemented. The story I think is not, uh, not yet implemented, we can do even better. So stories matter. So the main challenge uh, is that none of the stories I presented are, even, even though that the present are is revolutionary, that each of these stories has been foretold in past system, but no system algorithm all at once, and it's not because the technique is uh, lacking, it's that because people don't have a good, a good understanding. People don't, uh, don't have a view, people don't have a good story. So uh, my main challenge is to uh, have a system based on such a story. And, uh, and and for that to propagate the story. And the meta story here, uh, uh, the sad stories are what the things created. And the better stories are what the people do the creating. The sad stories are about uh, the software. The better stories are about the programming. The sad stories are about the, the, the static thing, you know, the artifacts, the machine. The good stories are about the people. The good stories are about uh, uh, the activities, the communities, uh, the interaction. So the set, the set is try to buy and try to decide early, okay, this is a good thing, we're going to stick to it and we'll make the decision early, and then uh, people will have to, to stick to it. And the good story is they try to ban the bad early. So I say, we try to make all the errors inexpressible. <laughs> we're trying to make uh, the changing the state in your bad, that's not expressible, you have a pure functional language. You have a, a, a state that... <coughs> First, orthogonal person set, all the state is there by default, it will never be deleted. You have to, uh, uh, the exception is to delete something. The default is that things are never deleted. Mm -hmm. So, the better story is that <coughs> they create a space where things are safe. The, the, the sad story is they try to, uh, to make a decision for you early on and then you're stuck with it. Okay, that was my, my first talk about stories. I want to tell, wanted to tell you that there were stories that were better than others. Now let's go back to uh, let's go back to my the talk I promised you about <laughs> logarithms and anthropologies because it's about stories. So I told you about stories. So stories have consequences. And what are the greatest stories? Hey, what are the great what is the greatest story of all time? Good. Yes? Greatest story? The greatest story. story. The story that yes. Listen, states. <laughs> <laughs> the, the greatest story is the origin. When you have a superhero story, they always make a reboot so they can go back to the origins. There is Superman, whatever, or the original Superman. Every new Superman or every other new Superman movie is uh, the special of Superman. Same thing for any superhero. Because origin is what takes us, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's the same. And uh, the greatest story of origin is the origin of the universe. And that's called uh, uh, what? Cosmogony. That's what they call a cosmogony. But yeah. no. also built in redundancies. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my take on point will be that stories have consequences, that the greatest story is the story of origins, and that you can improve your stories. So, to my plan, also, stories have consequences. Uh, stories are the best uh, way that you might communicate, understanding that that's why to our brain, our brain is, is built, uh, attuned to sequential stories, you know, seeing something happen and something happen, it has a, uh, an arc and uh, uh, it goes somewhere because that's intentionate, that's all the same. And you might act based on 
these stories. I mean, people care once again. Uh, there's a few books, uh, uh, both by many centuries, that people kill over still to this day. Uh, and uh, actions have consequences. So uh, this is a previous talk. And the greatest story, of course, the story of origins uh, and uh, for the universe is cosmogony. And for software, it's like low gogony. So gogony is like the origin or whatever. And cosmogony is the origin of the cosmos, of the universe. And low gogony is the origin of software. How does software come about? How does it happen? How does it happen? How does software happen? And I'm asking you this question. How does software happen? The theory is a software. What? I start typing. You start typing. Okay. The programmer starts typing. Okay. That, that's okay. The programmer works it. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's creationism. You know. I mean, the programmer writes software. It's creationism. And uh, uh, I, 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 and mind that I would be talking about evolutionism and creationism. I'm not talking about cosmology. You know. I'm not going to discuss if uh, a god actually exists or doesn't exist or whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's not the topic of this talk. <laughs> the topic of this talk is creationism and evolutionism for software. You know? <laughs> the answer for one or the other could be totally different. I don't care. I mean, I'm going to draw an analogy, but this is not, not cosmogony. I'm discussing low Google. And, uh, and that's why I don't have pictures because uh, I'm not good enough to... Uh, I wanted to, to take plenty of stock pictures from uh, evolution thing, but it was maybe too remindful of uh, cosmology. Maybe I'll do that another time, but uh, whatever. Creationism. Uh, the belief that software was created by a programmer. Why are there birds? 
Because there is. Uh, <laughs> He's, He's testing. So some adverse, and some adverse entity introduces a bug, and the errors and the mistakes. Uh, so it may be a noise the channel between man and uh, man, God and machine. I mean, man and machine. Whatever. Is there a Sorry. Do they say God channel? <laughs> speak louder, it's recorded. If, you speak louder, if I can't hear you, that's a. Uh, that was a stupid joke. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we can blame all the imperfections of the program on, on some adversarial <coughs> entity that we may call the default. Okay? Uh, it can be cosmic rays, you know, that people like you see that rays into the memory, or uh, you can. Uh, uh, when you type, he introduces typos. I, I have a friend who. Who had a, 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 what do you call the TSR, a, a resident, resident, resident program yeah, yeah, yeah. does. Uh, <laughs> when you type too fast, it, it started to change uh, nerdy letters. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you click and poke, it always does the, the <laughs> correct letter. <laughs> when you type when you're typing fast, it switches the letter with the next one. So that's an example of a default, you know, um, yeah. that, that happens. So default can be another programmer, or so default can be a uh, memory card, so it can be. Uh, discrepancy, just discrepancy between the perfect ID that you have a public ID and the measly uh, finite computer, buggy computer. You know, it can be anything. It can. So, what you have against okay, people, you have blinking lights, you know, you, oh, hi, something went wrong. Or you can have punch cards so that you, you can restore your program and inspect what were, were given to the computer. You don't have to enter a switch for that. The error because I entered the wrong thing or not, not reproducible. With punch card, at least it's reproducible. You can, you can even look at the punch card. You know, punch cards are perfect uh, uh, for a creationist programmer who is a default. You know? And you even have a state to fix the punch card. Or, and you start programming assembler rather than binary, so that when you need to make a change that moves all the addresses, uh, your program uh, still works. You know? So w w when there's no default, you are perfect God, you write the address, no problem. <laughs> but, uh, when there's a default, you don't want to do that anymore. You can program in assembler. So already, first programming language appears because of the default. So, and you can generalize the, the default. Any story can be spiced up with a uh, 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 <laughs> spiced up with a uh, default. And, uh, yeah, does anyone of you pro what, write games? Anymore. Okay. Yeah, a game without an opponent, no, it's not fun. So you can always make a whatever story I will tell about tradition uh, of, of whatever logo Goni I will write, uh, I can have a, a change it with a default and it will be good. So the default is good mixing. And the, 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 the story of, uh, of how evil appeared in the world is, as a clip is called CODC. CODC is the trial of God. How, how, how is there evil in the world if God is perfect? No? And by analogy, the, the story of how bugs appear, I will call anthropodicy, you know, trial of man. How does man make bugs happen even though man is a perfect... Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, at least man wants the, the, the software to work. I mean, he may not be perfect in other ways, but you really... The intent is there. So why are there still bugs? Okay. So a better story is possible. So I gave you a simple question story. How can we... Improve on that. Uh, here are second story. Layer creation. The first story was instant creation, you know? <laughs> the program is, uh, you know, let let every light and there's layer creation, well, uh, you need several steps and uh, you, will, you will write your, your software in layers as uh, the kernels, the blah blah blah, library, application, blah. So, so you have all these diag layer diagrams. Have a, um, you will have a, so the iteration, uh, what, what is it? It's a, because I still prefer to program ID, but because the machine is imperfect, or because the, the God's uh, mind is finite, or at least the communication channel between God and the machine is finite, you know, you have to, to deal with uh, parts. You, can't, you don't deal with a program as an entire thing, you deal with parts of a program. So you have files, you have functions, you have modules, you have something components, you have a flow diagrams, you have any kind of uh, hierarchy and structure of programs. 
So you have programming language, uh, structure programming, and uh, things like that. You have top down design, you have uh, waterfall process, everything is ordered. And by, by having order, you can vanquish the bugs by dividing the fluctuation into small, smaller than steps. And you can have divide and control algorithm, you can have formula translators and even better assemblers, etc. etc. And of course you can add a table. <laughs> And at every step you need a table, so that's why you need a process and keep uh, removing the, the bug, etc. And you reiterate the creation until all bugs are gone. And there's another name for this uh, layered or uh, um, uh, iterated, oh, yeah, well, well iterated creation. You have iterated creation. So you start uh, with a prototype, blah, 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 blah. And so, um, uh, so, the senior creation with the deep or iterative creation is best known as intelligent design. You know, your, your, your god he has an adversary, so he can't do the work perfect in the first try, so he make uh, several attempts, etc. But it's all well designed. It's all the god is like planning ahead, he's dividing his structure, etc. It's intelligent design. Seems like it might take a while. Sorry? Seems like it might take a while. Mm, yeah, I mean, maybe he's not that intelligent, and uh, <laughs> that, that our, that's our next point, actually. Uh, so, the intelligent design is God creates so simple software, and he improves, and etc., and he bootstraps the complex structure from simple one, and he discards the previous creation, and many parts remain as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you may yeah. assume, so. You missed the obvious Fortran joke there. <laughs> Sorry? You missed the obvious Fortran joke there, the dinosaurs. <laughs> Which is, uh, okay. he, 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 he said it, he said formula translation, oh. he did Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the assumption is that God's intelligence, he designs, etc. And design is not necessarily not perfect, but at least God is still essentially intelligent, you know, and with inter iteration they improve the design. Uh, and so you have software refinement, nested layers, you have modeling tools, and design iterations, so you have plenty of tools that correspond to, to this way. And um, have scaffolding, have like layers of assemblers, compilers, 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 builders, builders, everything. So you have like structure, you know, structure in the world. The world is full of structure and that change. And what we're going to create the devil will be like loggers, tracers, <laughs> single steppers, that editors to, to change the bug, daily uh, line baiting, that's just in the beginning. Uh, and we'll have some amount of reviewing and testing because you know you must look at the code to remove the bug. And that's uh, that's what kind of things. So and that, that's the official story. I mean, in, in a lot of the small or even big software companies, that's the official story. We're, we're intelligent, we're designers, we're engineers. We make things happen because we, uh, we have a good intent, good right direction, we're well managed, we have a, a process. process, yes. Six Sigma, whatever process, you know, 25 more ISO, ISO uh, 8000 something. <laughs> 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 you know, your, Intelligent control, good intent, good. Uh, uh, it can say in, in, in people, some people make it happen, but the story is uh, uh, that one can make uh, much better tools and much better programs, and that uh, to the top, both mechanical and social, it doesn't work that much because um, your programmer. So your programmer is is less of a god. It's already intelligent. intelligent God is not a perfect God, you know, you are, you're not perfect, you're only, you're only intelligent. And with this better story, you also have humility. You understand that the programmer is not a perfect God and he's only intelligent. So, uh, it's a better story, and uh, with every better story you'll see that the, the, the programmer has to step down on the, <laughs> on the ladder. At the beginning he's on top, he's a God programmer, and already he, he he had to step down and he will be his name for a big four and tell him. So, oh, oh, that's very mixing. Polytheism. Okay. Uh, unhappily, uh, the programs are so big that a single god cannot do it. So, uh, you can always spice up a story by having many gods and many programmers will have to cooperate. And the problem is that uh, sometimes their intent is not much, so there is a lot of uh, rivalry and it makes for great stories too. <laughs> uh, so, and Protestant can be either multiple gods, it can be multiple aspects of the same god, you know, the, the god is like this kind of or something, 
Uh, <laughs> it doesn't go change his mind. Have you ever uh, read a piece of software? This piece of software is crap. Oh, I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes. Uh, okay. So the tools, uh, you need more than five directories, you need a hierarchical directory, you need a time sharing system, you need multiple users, you need simultaneous processes, you need communication protocols between your machine, you need a uh, communication protocol between human, you need uh, to divide the software into modules, submodules, and split the responsibilities, you need to have comments, comments, and documentation is not being important in this way. And uh, we make that from good to good. And once again, sometimes God is just yourself for like one, one month or one year or ten years from now. You really need to, to tell this idiot what the program is about because he will you'll never know. <laughs> I will, you can have evil in and it could be an uh, opposite God, you know, like the North God and the versus uh, the giants, you know, or it can be, once again, the person is just kind of like God. I mean, God sometimes has mental disorders and. Uh, and uh, Passwords, access rights, backups, dependency checks, you know what I mean? Pages internationally let go. And uh, let, 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 let's give another story then. So when we when have accepted that in the end it's not enough and even with uh, all our best intentions and our best processes and best practice, everything, there are still goals, we have to, to have another better story. And, uh, we have to realize that software is just bad. That uh, God is not that intelligent. You know? <laughs> so the next story is an intelligent design. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that that page, an intelligent design? You should uh, Google for an intelligent design network. It's a, it's a very funny page. Uh, an intelligent design is something. Uh, you Google it after at some point. Uh, so, the programmer of God uh, is just stupid and uh, his internet, internet layer are full of Wait, so he does something like stupid from the get-go and he continues, oh, it was stupid, okay, well, uh, it's the start and the different regressions, you know, regression, if you have an intelligent God, well, he only makes progress, but an intelligent God introduces regressions and uh, the program can be totally inelegant or inefficient. So uh, it's not just that the program implementation is perfect, it's not just that the platonic ID, the platonic ID is itself not a platonic, it's not perfect. And uh, God typically doesn't have perfect intent, he doesn't know where he's going, he doesn't know much, he's, uh, he doesn't have infinite to heads and very finite things like myopic or sometimes even blind. And uh, uh, God intelligence is scarce resource, God intelligence is very scarce. So what you need is to have interactivity to quickly give if your, your idea is uh, good or not. You know, you ask the computer to have a quick, um, quick reply. You want to have a common line or a common IDE. Uh, you want to have uh, systematic sanity checks and uh, maybe type checks or something like that. Tests. Uh, you want to have a idiot, you want idiot proof your interface. So uh, you have online manual and interactive health have there. Compilers are likely to give you error messages to explain you exactly how stupid you are, in which way you are. If you want to check for syntax errors and have a runtime assertion, you want to have types and contracts, you want to do model checking for your things, you have all these kinds of tools that uh, allow you to fight the stupidity of God that would not be uh, necessary if God were intelligent. These tools appear because you realize that programmer is stupid and then you need the tools that, that cope with the stupidity. So uh, by improving your story, the, 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 the programmer has to step down one more step, but he actually gets to, to benefit from better tools because he accepted that uh, uh, he had to step down. Well, maybe you could just maybe you could say that, that intelligence is finite. There's only so much of it we can spend. Yes, so it's a finite capital. You have to spend it wisely. So okay. you, you have to prop up the rest of your 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 body with. You have to wear glasses, you know, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and that, that's what you do. And so, you have plenty of mixing, you can add policies, and so you have to protect God from each other's failures. You can have, um, and then you have a checks, uh, you know, contract check and boundary of modules, and like that. You can have uh, the dealer who, uh, 
who is everywhere, so you test everything all the time, so you have a test, uh, test uh, chains, what we call that uh, uh, automated testing things like uh, QA, automated QA, whatever. And, um, but it, it happily, the team was just as stupid as a programmer. At least you, 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 you figure out, okay, the programmer is stupid, but the team also. So you, you can refine the kind of um, uh, tools you have against people because uh, God is not perfect, but neither is the people. Excuse me? Yes. Why should the devil be a separate entity? I think the devil should just be the complement of our imperfect knowledge to... That's why, that's why, that's why interpretation. Sometimes the devil is a guy in Russia or China, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yet, yeah, most of the time the devil is just you being... Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, so... It is a dead story. That's an untold story behind a lot of software engineering. People never want to say the story aloud, but they know. They know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> the downer for the intelligent design, the, the programmer uh, loses some more respectability, and uh, probably science becomes like not just intelligent, but stupidly ignorant. And uh, he has personal intelligence, and now a shallow mind with a focus, and uh, has disabilities like impatient, blindness, biases, post beliefs, neurosis, whatever. I mean, the programmer is like very perfect, but now that you have accepted all that, you have all these tools that that help you, you know, because you have accepted your imperfection, you have accepted all uh, the improvements that that, that can uh, uh, prevent you from butting your head against every every wall and every door. So you can have protect devices. Okay, now for another big thing, Lamarckism. Lamarckism is the you recognize the fact that like, software comes in many uh, stages, and instead of considering the stages as a state, you consider the changes between the stages. And you, because you have, the, you have a tool called diff, you know? And uh, because you have a tool called diff, a lot of things become possible. You can have increments, you can have incremental testing, you can have incremental everything. So, the state, so Lamarckism does not necessarily have a good story. Lamarckism does not necessarily have a good story about uh, how change happens or, or why it happens, etc. But by just changing the focus from state to change, it, has, it enables a lot of uh, further stories. So Lamarckism is a great uh, mixing. And, uh, and the tool will be, of course, file versioning, version control, configuration management, if patch merge, etc. And you can Lamarckism little out. You can uh, review the changes. Now that I have, uh, you know, I don't need to review the whole program every time. You have a 10 million line program. You don't need to review the whole program every time. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to review the patch and test the whole program, and uh, uh, you know, hopefully that will be enough. So that, that's that's a that there's, that there's, there's no complex. Yeah. Well, of course, but it allows you to scale to much larger. Yeah. Thing. If every if every change you need to review one million lines. It will go much slower than if that's every change in two with one line, you know? Uh, and it will go much faster. So the number of keys of it makes it is now an accepted part of all the trivial software management. Some people still write in the version control, but most uh, do that. And if, you, if you're not uh, embracing the of you should. You should uh, have uh, all your software in Git or something like that. And, uh, It's, uh, it's open the door for, by the way, for the evolution of software. So evolutionism. Okay, now we're at evolutionism. But uh, evolutionism has many flavors, comes in many flavors. Just like uh, creationism has many flavors, so does evolutionism. So uh, we can apply Darwin's famous theory to software. And Darwin just copied the story from his uh, grandfather, but he got it from uh, economists. Actually. Historians are economists, but uh, the idea of evolutionism before biologists uh, created it. And and uh, so our, our story will be about uh, evolution, but once again, we can talk with a very naive view of evolution. Very naive view is what I call supernatural selection. In supernatural selection, there is change that happens, but there is a god above that looks at the changes and selects the changes that should happen. You know, so 
the change is not random. The, 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 and for that remember, you could go and choose it, what, what you're going to do. Right? So you have an intelligent card who is going to pick the, pick the correct change. And uh, that's a supernatural selection. That's not, that's not Darwin's theory. That's a supernatural selection. So this way you can have progress at the state of space. The programmer god does not really like design the whole program in advance, but he can like look at this change and say, yes, this change is good. And uh, programs maybe deeper than God can trust them, but God can uh, easily judge good from bad as a set of uh, exception, and he can promote the good and the bad. So uh, God can design the fitness function, essentially. Uh, the programmer God knows, can tell a good change from a bad change. Perfect unit test. Sorry? The perfect unit test. Yes, the, the, God, the programmer God is a perfect uh, unit test if you want. But you need it's a perfect test. It's like the changes. So you can have more iterative programming. Then. You can just have to specify the goal. You know? God can specify the goal and then the machine or the evolution the changes, whatever you choose. So that whole product can be a great uh, tool for the supernatural selection. You have a better programming language. You can have heuristic search. You can have a, a prototyping rapid development because uh, you make changes happen and then select what, what is good. And uh, a, any kind of uh, methodology where you make lots of experiments and uh, filter the ideas, that, that's supernatural selection. So uh, you can select the default away by having a formal specification of the software input <coughs> and that's, you set the goal and Setting the goal doesn't say exactly how you arrive there, but at least you can specify where you're going, and you can uh, do things like that. And uh, uh, with policies, supernatural selection, uh, many you need to have to the selection, and you have set software modules and separate interface for interpretation. The interface is a goal, the interpretation is a, a whole thing there, and you can have forums for your opportunities. It's, uh, and you can uh, filter against Gable uh, together. Like, against you know, and uh, that's how you reach each other's patch, that's how you uh, will have also unhappily because sometimes uh, the devil is one of the other programmers uh, or inside his head or something, so you have to monitor accesses and you have to interpretate you have to moderate the program. And super central section stories uh, has, has tried to communities. I mean, uh, if inside big, in big companies still like the creationist things, but, uh, or with a bit of anarchism sometimes, but uh, programmer communities understand evolutionism, or at least they understand the supernatural selection of the current part of evolutionism. And uh, I suppose the movement that uh, first looks at that is uh, the first cybernetics, I don't know if you know the way of cybernetics, but the first cybernetics is people who think that they can achieve AI by basically um, selecting the right thing and have these touristic searches and uh, Structure is formed, but something about the structure that is uh, so declarative programming and explicit knowledge documentation and expert system, things like that. So, the other side of supernatural selection is that you can have all the new tools once again, and because you understand better the dynamics of the software, uh, you have still the ultimate face and the ultimate power intelligence of God, uh, who is intent and uh, purposeful, but you embrace the change, you embrace the chaos, but with still the God above, who is, a, who is yes, channeling the, the things. And the downside, of course, is that the uh, uh, programmer is not intelligent anymore, but he's meta-intelligent. He's intelligent at the meta level. You know? uh, I, I can't program well, but I can still judge perfectly, you know? Uh, <laughs> 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 and that's what we call teleo teleological evolution, where God knows the goals, he has no clue how to get there. <laughs> and so there is a fitness function, but uh, you don't understand it. You just can run it. At best, you can run it. God can run the fitness function, but you can't design it. He lacks on the science of clairvoyance, but he can guide still. He can still guide the progress, he can guide the evolution. So, Fitness programs survive and others die out, and uh, 
If God smiles, so the program is good. So God still puts us something, you know. An unspeakable quality is that allows him to find where to go, in which direction to go. Yeah, God possesses a sort of meaning or something, direction of progress. So what does that lead us to? We can have things like randomized algorithm, simulation, we can have statistical analysis, probabilistic proof, things where you don't really know, but you remember the fact that you don't really know and don't really not need to know, you know, because the devil is also very stupid and uh, you can eliminate it, you know, like uh, statistically. And you can have part of your fast passing practice even if the service is, oh, well, this program will be uh, uh, like, you know, exponential time, but it might not matter as a practice. So you, you, embrace, you embrace more of the chaos, you have quicker structures, and that goes more or less to the second wave of cybernetics where people try to get inspiration from life forms and inventing like genetic algorithms and connectionist neural networks and trying to have knowledge about representation just by uh, filtering lots of data, you know, of big uh, filtering matrices like that. That's uh, uh, like how these days people try to analyze uh, big data with uh, neural network, etc. And you can have Probably, probably yeah, key or approximately correct or anything like that. You embrace the, you embrace this bloody nature of things, <laughs> and you can make it polytheistic. Uh, you can have communities uh, gathered that are not just developers but also users because they partake in determining if things are good or bad. You know, it's not just uh, the intelligent God who can tell if things are good or bad. By using, you have to. To figure out did it work for you, did it not work for you, you get, you get A-B testing, things like that. You embrace uh, the fruit and knowledge, the wisdom of crowds, uh, you um, and you vote to, to win a little bit eventually. So have a question takes three, blah 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 blah. Who cares? Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, theological evolution is yesterday's next week thing, you know, that's uh, that was big uh, years back. And uh, it also allows for better solutions to that where they were not and uh, can allow software to rescale. And of course, downside is always to step down. Still, you know, there is a, to make a reasonable attempt, but in the end, you suck. In the end, in the end you don't really know. You know, you, you know something, but you don't even know what you know or what you don't know. And uh, uh, there is, but you still believe that there is something. You still believe that there is some some good food to the programmer. Um, that's not what Darwinism is, of course. The real vision of evolution by Darwin is natural selection. And in natural selection, there is no God above or beyond the machine. There is no supernatural reason or intent. And survival is its own theoretical fitness function. If it survives, it survives. If it doesn't survive, it doesn't survive. And each, uh, in each niche, uh, mean survives at the uh, best of our resources. And, uh, uh, random hacks and mishaps modified programs and so uh, it's not this that's a bit of tautology is something that is tautological what survives in the proper produces in survival and reproduces what does and doesn't and uh, that's all and you know all kinds of resources we can uh, be interpreted for and most importantly uh, programmers are, are the same Programmers are not gods above machines. You're of course in the same universe, you're selected for or not, you may die, you may uh, work for 10 years on software that's going to be canned, you know. Uh, you, may, uh, you may write totally the wrong software that no one will use, or you, people will use it and you will regret that they use it. And uh, <laughs> human productive time is the ultimate cost resource for, for software, you know. Uh, that's that. Software doesn't do it to make itself unhappily, or not yet, or when it does. Uh, have problems. Uh, but programmers and machines are actors at the same level. They are different. Machines are not the same as programmers and programmers are not the same machines. There are clear differences. But it's not a difference where one is like a god above the other. No, it's the same, it's still the same universe. And of course, in a unique can different as a programmer, but uh, it's just like everyone else. You know, uh, everyone is unique and different. So uh, we have polyatheism. Polyatheism means that. Uh, not just 
technical quality, but also application of problem and resources matter. I mean, you need to, uh, to convince other people to work with you. I can have great ideas, and if I don't talk to you at the least minute, uh, I will never have other people work with me. I need to convince you to work with me. I need to convince other people to work with you. So, uh, economic and social issues are part of programming, are not in a different universe, they are part of the same concern. If you have a great idea, you still need to talk to other people. Economic, you still need to have enough food to, on your table tomorrow. You know, it's, a, it's part of the same world. It's not a, it's not a computer is not a safe world where you're above and, you know, uh, have a life and then and God know what's happening in the same universe. Mm -hmm. So, legal and national aspect matter, things like that. And it's all consent, but, yeah. Okay, so you need some self-sustaining system that evolve and compete. So, you, Start thinking in terms of uh, dynamics. Have you, has any of you read Systematics or uh, books like that? Well, it's a book that says that uh, the only big systems that exist and survive are systems that were more small and grew and survived at a every step that they grew. So it tells you uh, not to write software that, uh, not, not to aim at writing a software that will be big and will work for something very tough. So, we want to keep it working at all time. We want uh, to keep things simple because complexity costs. And we want to fork and learn traditions and a few other things. Take good ideas here, good ideas there, build tradition, but embrace the good ideas from other traditions. And, and uh, if uh, your tradition is not working, fork it. That, that part, you, you are part of the, uh, well, the programmer is part of the, this evolution thing. And the deal is uh, all too human also. Well, it's, a guy, it's a guy in China or sometimes, or yes. In nature, we're for a long time. Yes. Yeah, so, so it, yeah. it's rooted in uh, uh, natural selection, is rooted once again uh, in biology, etc. I mean, it's well understood in this context, but it also applies to software and programming. So, uh, the deal of being human, you can also trust networks uh, to fight the people and uh, or, or bad networks of bad guys also, and there's always this race between. The noise of the signal between you have to be part of the, the noise and uh, of the signal and uh, fight the noise and it's, uh, there's always this competition. <coughs> the more the more you run forward, uh, the more you stay in the same place because then uh, you also run forward. There's an uh, arm of arm races and like that. So let's go some more. Let's do sort of cybernetics where they are, they are trying to recreate artificial life by unguided evolution and things like that and. Uh, to find how uh, behavior emerges from any agents. Uh, and the central selection story is sometimes mentioned, but uh, most people find it too hard to swallow. It's too hard to, I mean, it's like, I'm not a god anymore. I mean, I, I went to programming because I wanted to be the god, you know? Yeah. I wanted to have uh, this domain where I was dominating the machine. And now I find that I'm not a god anymore. I, I don't like story. People don't like stories. They don't, even if they with lip service, so really uh, in their politics, contemporary in their politics. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Can you turn down the sound? <laughs> 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 Fight the problem that you have that you were 
not looking at before. And you don't have a solution, but you also don't have all the things. So you can remove that from illusions. You can, like it's a Zen concept, Buddhist concept, you remove the illusion and then you can actually act in the world. And so the downside that, uh, okay, if God exists, then if we ever since he created the world, it is uh, he's not, she's not reacting in the industry, you know. Uh, evolution is not guided by God, it's God's spectator of the sport. You know, he sets a role, he, he sets a team, and he's watching, he's not acting. And he's not you. So the most important thing, God may or may not exist, but it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, but uh, perspective change. We're also not an observer outside the frame. You know? We're not a, oh, but, oh, look at this programmer and this machine. <laughs> they, were, they thought they were good, but actually they were not. Uh, no, you are one of them. Come on. So, uh, the last uh, view of evolution is the view of the evolution from the inside. Because you're not outside the evolution and watching the world, you're inside it. So, you have to focus on your, on your uh, available opportunities. And you have to focus on what will make you most productive. And um, you can sell only one to the resource, which, which is your own time, talent, and trustworthiness, etc. Uh, that's it's not an impersonal story about um, you know programmers and machines. It's you. It's a pure personal story. There is a soul in the machine, and the soul is you. It's not so. Oh, it was just so impersonal. No, it's not impersonal. It's very personal. It's not like soundless. It's very soundful. But the sound is you. There is no, um, uh, you cannot uh, look for sound outside yourself. You are, you have the sound, you put the, the sound line into the thing. So you must uh, understand incentives and make cooperation between profitable and other people. You must understand division of labor and specialization of class. You must understand all these things. You must understand uh, uh, software licenses and service agreements and why the software is evil. And, uh, you must avoid all the fraud and spammers and scammers who try to, uh, to have you use uh, their authority uh, of two programming languages and platforms. And uh, you will have to either keep on top of the rate or delegate anything where you're not the best, delegate. You use other people's wisdom and code because you can't be the best at everything. Focus on what you're best at and, and, delegate and adopt other people's code for the rest. So, uh, software is mortal and not immortal. Uh, well, in the tradition of software theory, it's an intelligence. If you really want to develop another thing for free software, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> and the inside evolution story is adopted by a lot of uh, upstart entrepreneurs and their dogs, you know, and I think that program speaks a lot for uh, this kind of view. You don't have to agree with everything he said, I don't, whatever. <laughs> He's, 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 he's not a god above us, he's also the one of us, but he said a lot of things that much more to this point of view. And so that's why I, I call my, uh, my article From Uber God to Underdog. <laughs> In the beginning, you have Uber God and now you have Underdog. So the, the game is rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And you can't <laughs> let, decide, let nature decide because you're part of the nature that decides. So the upsides are that. It's not a sound best word you have. Uh, you have a sound of the world. And the world is full of big failures. It's full of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So you are the entrepreneur of your life. All right, whoops. And now part, uh, last part of the thing, failure. You have time for another part. Are you bored uh, oh, of your life? A few minutes. A few minutes, okay. So I wanted to say that uh, part didn't evolve. Because uh, I told you a story about the evolution of software and how software evolves. But I also told you a story about how stories about software evolve. And you know, the first story is not the same as the last story, there's labels in these stories. And stories matter. And, and you can improve your life and improve the world by just improving the story. By making the stories explicit, I think it's a great meta tool and you can really understand the, software, the world better, make for a better world, and avoid all, all kinds of mistakes. So, uh, it's relevant because even if you <laughs> think, oh, I don't care about the stories, it's just stories. Well, you don't care about the stories, but there's always the implicit stories in everything you say. The said, there's no such thing as philosophy free science. But only science with philosophical baggage taken on board without determination. 
Uh, if you if you don't understand what story you're using when you're programming, you're probably using a bad story that would make you make lots of mistakes that you could easily avoid if you had better stuff. Uh, yeah, the good story is also killed for once again. Uh, stories matter. So every discrepancy between reality and practice between your, 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 your story and uh, practice, it's a blind spot, you know? If uh, your story says something but reality is different, it's a blind spot. And uh, uh, right, the, if the difference is uh, in your theory, it's a blind spot you can't identify. And uh, if uh, the theory is different from the practice, you, you can actually identify the blind spot. Oh, there's this thing that I want. My story says this and my practice says this. And there's obviously a blind spot that I, I can see and, and deal with. Uh, what next? Uh, present optimism. So, uh, present optimism says, oh, now we've got definitive story. Now I understand. That's the end. The best story. And I mean, there's just no future, and uh, we have already reached the end of time, because we have found the best, the best story ever. Uh, the future optimism would be the singularity. Oh, in the future, uh, there will be AI, there will solve all these problems. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> The problem is not solved now, but it will be solved uh, in the future by the singularity. Uh, you can see then that there is an opportunity for mutation. How will this uh, singularity happen? Maybe through AI or something. Well, how am I going to make this AI happen? You, know, you see that there is, if you have this uh, inside view of evolution, you see that it's, it's an opportunity, that's something you could do. Well, what, what can you do that will uh, faster make this future happen? And uh, the first thing is what I call internal system. Thanks for that. The product optimism, no shit, you are uh, blah blah blah, singularity, the AI will try to solve all these issues. But the problem is that even in the future, the work has to stop somewhere. The work has to stop with someone who can say, yes, the AIs will also solve all the problems that we have, but how will they solve that? Who will solve the problem for them? You know? It just still has to solve the problem. Even if the AI is capable of solving all your programming problems, the AI somehow has to deal with the programming program. So the AI will have to deal with programs. And, and don't think that there will be less program, less software when AI takes over the world. There will be even more software and even more problems. So AI will have to develop a methodology for software. And we can say something about that. So AI is not escape evolution. AI also has to survive in the AI, AI world, you know. And uh, we have still scarce resources in competition. And there is this uh, science called praxeology that tells us uh, what applies to any system of intentional agent, uh, it's economics. And um, laws such as cooperative advantage still applies or, or supply and demand still applies, something like that. So, and that's why we, can, we, we know that humans and AI will probably trade and not make war if they're intelligent because comparative and it's after that thing that humans do better than machines and then the machine will ask the human to do it. So as long as the humans can uh, justify their existence by for the sound the risk to the machines, so it's fine. Right. Okay. We can keep a few minutes for questions. Okay. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, my last slide was about yes, a hint for bootstrapping intelligence. Uh, we can uh, try to understand how human intelligence works and can realize that our finite point of progress, that you know, the genetic code of human is finite. So, after a finite time, which may be long, we'll have tried to of intelligence. You know, it's, fi it's a finite point, everything is finite in the world. Uh, so, that's a good thing. Uh, and then you can use good stuff, this is good stuff, it. And uh, I think one, one thing, I, uh, last thing I wanted to put is that once you understand that problem is a dialogue with a machine and not comment, you're not a bad about the machine, but you're in interaction with it, it opens a whole new uh, way of considering what computer systems are, or how they can be better. Whatever. Uh, yes, questions? What are you reading right now? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I'm reading right now is, uh, or was reading uh, recently, was, okay, 
uh, read Robin Hanson's book on AMS, Emulated Brains. He has a book on the economics of uh, emulated brains, but it's not out yet for the preview. Uh, I'm reading a book by Jacques Picard called uh, The Conscious of Conscious Machine, what uh, artificial beings, the conscience of a conscious machine, or something, or, and uh, uh, other books. But, uh, yes, that's a, that's a book I suppose are more relevant to that uh, discussion. In your, in your world, uh, what counts as faith? What what? What counts as faith? What what faith? Faith. 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 What the word faith? Faith. 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 Well, in, your world, in, in, faith. in your in this world, in this what world. is faith? <laughs> oh, well, faith it can be many things. I mean, uh, you need at least to have faith uh, in your own value to live, to live. <laughs> if, if you think you have no value, commit suicide, and that's that, that the story. Every every living being has enough faith in himself to. Uh, to, uh, to breathe and continue to live. <laughs> but uh, if you want to have faith in things that are also bogus, well, it's a mistake. You know, faith in things that are wrong is a mistake. Faith in, uh, faith in things that are not wrong is uh, actually necessary. But uh, if you have faith in something that's wrong, you're making a big mistake. <laughs> yes? Uh, what inspired you or made you think of uh, uh, categorizing stories about software in terms of this evolution and uh, creation. I don't remember exactly how it started, but I was asked uh, what my twins project was about. And I was trying to explain that, well, it's a more dynamic, you know, evolutionistic uh, way of programming. And then, okay, if, if my point is evolutionistic, whatever, uh, then what is creationism? And then that's how I. I came back to that. I, I, I started from yes. I started from my, uh, have an evolutionist point of view on programming. And, uh, okay. It's <laughs> creation. <laughs> yeah. What's the creation? And then the rest. Good question. Yeah. I never thought that. Yes. I, oh, where does refactoring fit into your stories? <laughs> uh, it can fit in many places. It, it fits at least as early as intelligent design. You know where. Uh, at some point you have a software that has one shape and you want to make it better. You know, refactoring is one of the tools. But uh, in all the subsequent stories it, it happens. And what is important also is that there are many stories. At any, for any given problem, uh, some stories are way overkill. If you have a simple bar, don't invoke uh, uh, evolutionism to fix a problem that you can see and uh, fix. You know, just fix it. Uh, you always do the least story necessary for for, for your purpose. You know, stories are tools and uh, if you have a way over complex a tool, it will not help you. Use the simplest tool to solve your problem. But sometimes the tool is not is less simple than the one that you have uh, right now. Yes? Um, as far as refactoring, I think you can see like the uh, independent evolution. You can see independent evolution as a form of refactoring, but it's very slow because it has to happen in parallel with something else and then how compete it. So in the evolutionary model, it, refactoring doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, you know, in sequence. It, it's just sort of something else comes up that's structured differently and performs better, and eventually it takes over. It takes over. I'm um, with speciation. <laughs> uh, do you think that there are literate programming techniques will fit into the story? Uh, literate programming techniques are uh, would fit in the. Fully theist intelligent design uh, phase where you have to explain your software to other intelligent gods and you, uh, you, you understand perfectly your software when you explain it to others. So it fits in the intelligent, uh, fully theistic uh, intelligent design phase. But it, it, once again, sometimes it's exactly what you need. Yes. One more. So this is um, a very dualistic view of things. Um, have you considered a Buddhist interpretation? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Buddhist interpretation is more of the natural selection in the end, you know, the end of accepting reality and uh, removing the illusions and, uh, uh, yeah, so Buddhism would be a very, one of the next to last views of, uh, of this thing. Quick question. Quick So the last eight in this book, uh, Programming is a Dialogue, Last of Man. Right? Yes. Um, so, I mean, uh, how do you interpret that when you know machines and computers are basically non-negotiable instruction chain? I am there to give the instructions, and if that if you cannot execute. Well, you, you're a creationist, yes. I, I see. I can see you're a creationist, but in, in practice, uh, the, the the humanism 
find everything that has some uh, advantage, it's comparative advantages or something you can do well, yeah. something the machine can do well. And so you want to you want to do the part that you do well and have the machine do the part that it does well. And that's that's an interaction. Even like pulling off the, the interactive help, you know, it's something the machine does, you don't know you can't remember all this detail and the machine will tell you it's it's an interaction, yes. Uh, okay, really the last this time. Yes. <laughs> you go to twelve. The last class. We've covered a lot of territory yes. in your cosmology. Yes. Uh, however, I don't see a flood story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will leave this uh, question unanswered and I'll uh, think about it. <laughs>